Welcome to the Emotional Balance Sheet, the go-to podcast for parents with multiple kids, especially those with twins, triplets, or more, who are navigating the maze of modern family life and personal finance. Whether you're overwhelmed by education or retirement planning, parenting dilemmas, career transitions, or trying to define your purpose and plan, we're here to guide you with empathy, encouragement, and expertise. Hosted by Paul Fenner, founder of Tama Capital, a certified financial planner and parent to four kids, including a set of triplets. Our podcast is your ally in the quest for financial peace of mind, proving that money matters, but family comes first. Subscribe now and join our community of empowered parents at TamaCapital.com. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Tama may retain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. Welcome back. At retirement, your whole financial life essentially collapses down to one binary question. Will your money outlive you or will you outlive your money? Most people I meet with or speak with not only don't know the answer, but they don't know that that was the question. Let me give you an example. A non-smoking couple of average retirement age, which is around 62, has a joint life expectancy of 30 years. So in plain English, this means on average, the second person in that relationship will live past age 92. Typically, or currently, trendline inflation is about 3%. I know that over the last couple of years, it's been much higher than that. But the cost of living goes up almost two and a half times over a 30-year period based on 3%. So... If you don't have a plan to increase your income as much as your cost of living increases are going up, then you may not realize it, but you have a plan for running out of money. One of my missions here at Tama is to help people make the right kind of plan and to realize these subtleties within compounding. And it's a much shorter, less complicated conversation than you might think. So the S&P 500 is made up of the 500 largest, best financed, and typically most profitable companies in the world. And these companies have been raising their dividends at nearly twice the rate of inflation. Did you know that? Rising dividends are one important reason why smart people have kept their retirement incomes growing well beyond their current cost of living. The only rational medium for a genuine advisor relationship that I have with people is to present these facts and to help coach them on the behavioral side of investing. Because let's face it, most people just want to look at the performance. And it really comes down to How do you make decisions in the heat of the moment? So in the long run, how we define money is really in how we define purchasing power. Currency isn't money. It's just currency. And it loses some of its purchasing power every year because of inflation, as we just talked about. So even if you perfectly preserve your principal, you start with a million dollars, and you end with a million dollars, your cost of living will double over that that 30-year retirement time period. Since 1926, large companies in the US have typically compounded at an average rate between 8 to 10%. Depends what index you look at. Bonds, on the flip side, have compounded somewhere between 4 and 5%. And then if you go back and and include inflation that has usually averaged about 3% every year, the margin of safety equities provides over bonds is almost twice that amount. And this is why I prefer to be an owner in companies rather than lending to them. 
And one of the pushbacks that I get on this topic is, well, what about the volatility, Paul? Like, I can't stand the ups and downs of the market. Well, there's no such thing as a free lunch. That's the price of admission, if you will, to be able to get the long-term compounding returns that these companies offer, as well as that really key component of compounding dividend increases. So volatility isn't the same as risk. Really, how I define risk is, going back to that initial question, are you going to run out of money? Are you going to be able to achieve your plan? It's not about you know, the benchmark. I missed my benchmark by 1% or 2%. That's, it's kind of irrelevant in the bigger picture because all that merely matters is what is your plan and how are you going to achieve it? So the dominant factor in long-term real-life financial outcomes Again, isn't so much your investment performance as it is your investment behavior. And that's really my true value in being an advisor and working with people is to help them understand that. We can all put the numbers together, but when that plan is in place, it's helping people stick to it in good times and in bad. What does comprehensive financial planning even mean? At Tama Capital, it means a family office where lifestyle planning such as retirement, college, portfolio management, and tax prep and planning are all under one umbrella. But it goes beyond numbers. We focus as much on the emotional side of financial planning as we do on the financial side. We get you. We understand your challenges of building a family, business or career, and a healthy life. We are devoted to wealth planning for families like yours because we are you. Learn how our family can help your family by visiting TamaCapital.com. Now that you've made it to the end of another great conversation, are you looking for more? If so, head over to TamaCapital.com where you will find all of our conversations. Use the search feature to find the topic or guest you would love to learn more about. Also, don't forget to make someone else's day by sharing our show. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.